Brandy Sapp was a healthy 30-year-old when she was barrel racing. And I come out of the catch pen and my horse crow hopped. And crow hop means when she hops in a different direction. Well, my body went right and she went left and I pulled with my left leg back onto the saddle. And once I've done that, my leg apparently pulled apart and came back together. Thinking her injury was no big deal, Sapp returned to work. However, while there, she became jaundiced and was rushed to the hospital. It turned out her hip was broken and because it was untreated, had become severely infected. Thank goodness that I was here at St. Vincent's. When St. Vincent's found out and they tested me and everything, I, my body went into like a shock. And from there, after it went into a shock, I was here for like 22 days. And they got my infection calmed down. <laughs> While in the hospital, it was Dr. Stanton Longenecker, an orthopedic surgeon who diagnosed Sapp's broken hip. He says that he's never seen a hip as bad as mine. Oh, God. And I was wonderful. Damn. Because the infection had ravaged the hip, Longenecker had to remove part of the femur. He then placed a temporary prosthesis customized with cement and infused with antibiotics to kill the infection. Once the infection was gone, Sapp became the first person in Jacksonville and the second in the nation to be fitted with the newly designed hip stem, the Revelation. The hip is a ball and socket joint. The socket is the cup-shaped part of the pelvis, while the ball is the head of the femur. In a total hip joint replacement, the surgeon removes the diseased or damaged ball and socket and replaces them with an artificial joint. What happened with the old implant? It was designed to go down in the stem. And in this cutout model, you can see that the stem would run from the upper part of the neck all the way to a third of the way down the femur. And that gave us a good fit and fill. I've used this prosthesis successfully for about 18 years. But one of the problems we see with it is the upper end of the bone would resorb somewhat. We're going to switch to a whole new concept. Longenecker is part of the DJO surgical design team that developed the revelation. The prosthesis is only about two inches long, much shorter than a traditional eight inch prosthesis. And we turn it sideways, we can see there's no motion anywhere. It's got one, two, three point fixation very nicely, very quickly. Whereas this really only has two points. And if you look down closely, you'll see that in this model, it actually wiggles. And one of the problems we had with the stems like this was thigh pain. Patients in the trials of the new shorter revelation had no thigh pain. That's because the prosthesis more closely mimics a natural hip joint. The implant has a flared top, just like the ball of a normal femur. It fits snugly inside the bone, putting the patient's weight on the top, rather than putting stress down the leg. We ended up doing was removing this. The revelation also saves bone. You see, when you walk, the surfaces of an implanted joint rub against the remaining bone, slowly wearing it away and creating dust that can lead to bone degeneration. The new prosthesis provides a better fit and therefore less wear and tear. Patients with this prosthesis are also able to put weight on their leg the same day as their surgery. This is good news for young patients such as SAP. To prepare Sap for her new implant, Longenecker first removes the temporary hip. With the old implant out of the way, the surgeon carefully reams out a new cup space, creating a half circle in which the new cup will sit. Longenecker then reams the femur, leaving a narrow hole for the prosthesis. No cement this time, the bone will grow into tiny holes in the implant. So after all that, what we have is a prosthesis that's considerably smaller than the prosthesis before, but really all the fit is gonna occur right up here where you see this matrix of material, and that's the bone and growth. This has been polished smooth, so it has no effect on what's happening. Of course, this is the neck, and that's what she is. And we're gonna just slip that into hit this hole and tap it in place. This is the second model of the Revelation implant. The first looks nearly identical, but is more than three inches long, still much shorter than a traditional prosthesis, and better suited for older, less active patients. The new, shorter Revelation is designed specifically with patients under 50 in mind. Take the two out. More than 193,000 total hip replacements are performed each year in the United States. 
About a third of those are performed on patients under 65 and up to 10 percent of those on people under 50. More and more we're seeing people that are injured via one way or another and their hips going bad and it's time to replace them. It's nice to know you have a prosthesis that isn't going to take a whole lot of bone away and it's going to let them be very active. I walked yesterday after surgery to the chair and back through the chair. I haven't been able to walk for like seven months. And, to, and I opened my leg finally, my left leg, and bent it a little bit, and that was really awesome because I have not been able to do that at all. I'm not in any pain at all. That's I didn't cool. think I'd be up moving fast as I am.